Welcome back to another video. Today, of course, we are going to be looking at some kind of tutorial. But this time, we're going to talk about how to edit photos in Lightroom using a Wacom display. And if you haven't already noticed, I'm joined by a special guest. But first, it's Tutorial Tuesday! <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each every each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh <laughs> photography tutorial. This week, of course, like I mentioned in the intro, we are going to be editing a photo on Lightroom with a Wacom display. And I'm joined by Dave Mallows, who is a photography retoucher, a Wacom ambassador, and general knower of all things to do with displays such as this. And Dave, you're going to take us through how you edit photos on Lightroom. Yep. But using a Wacom display like this. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So, a random mix of images. Uh, we've got some portraits, a bit of landscapes, uh, some bit of wildlife in there, and my Lovely. daughter galloping down the beach just to finish off. Awesome. Um, so, we're just going to take you through how I would edit those images, and more specifically, how I'd edit those images on the Wacom 24 that we're using here today. So, this is a 24 inch Wacom Cintiq Pro. It's Perfect. a nice, nice big display, right? Nice it's big display, nice and clear. Uh, it's 4K display. Um, awesome. You can see it's pin sharp, super accurate. And as we go through, I'm driving this off of my laptop, um, but you can drive this off of, uh, you know, it could be a Mac Studio, it could be a PC. Um, it, this works as a standalone monitor plugged into your system. Cool. Um, so you can use it as a primary screen, a secondary screen. Awesome. It's very flexible. And you're working directly on that with the pen, right? And you work directly on the screen. Awesome. So you are editing your images directly. So if you're doing adjustment brushes and things like that, then it's much more uh, immersive and it feels more fluid. You're, you're in it, you're on the picture, you're in there, you're working actually on the image itself. Awesome. So it's a really engrossing and the sort of encompassing experience of editing. Really different way to work, but um, thoroughly engaging is the term I'm looking for there, I think. Great. Good. So, um, start with this profile. This is a friend of mine, Joe, he needed some headshots doing. Uh, he's actually a mature model. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it's not going to appreciate me telling you. <laughs> well, he uh, looks good. Yeah, uh, he looks underexposed, I know that much. So, um, he's a good looking chap, so let's make him better, shall we? So, I'm just going to start off. Let's have a look. What do we need to adjust? For me, it's always about appraise quickly. What is it in this image that I need to adjust? He's got a lovely blue jacket on, which is being lost against the black, so I need to bring the shadows up. Needs a bit more exposure. I'm gonna to have to watch the highlight on the back of his neck. Um, so it's, there's a few things to think about. The T-shirt's quite well balanced in the middle of it. Mm. There's a lot to think about there. Right, so thing with Lightroom sliders, don't be scared. Let me just turn the touch off on this one. So I'm using pen only on this instance. So let's just bring the exposure up. I'm gonna bring the exposure up until I think the general overall balance of the thing feels pretty good. You can see the definition now between the jacket and the background. Um, also, not too much. It's not too much on the shirt. Uh, we've put 1.2 stops of extra light into that. So it's quite a big change. Shadows, I'm just gonna bring up a small amount. I am gonna put a little bit of black back in. What, do you find you'd have to bring black into your images just to give it that contrast, a bit yeah, of depth? Yeah, just yeah, that bit it's of depth. It's really common. Uh, it just I think most cameras shoot that. It just needs that little bit. Give it that little bit of depth. Yeah, definitely. Um, bit of richness, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, um, and also for that. I will, with the latest versions of Lightroom, you've got texture. Um, I've started adding texture in because that's like a mid-tone clarity as well. Mm. And that just gives it that little, little punchy bit of depth as well also. Not quite to the extent that clarity would do it. Uh, and I might just give it a little bit of vibrance just to richen it up, give it the old nice. transparency feel. Lovely. Um, so let's bring the highlights down a little bit on there. I'm just gonna push the exposure just a touch more, small amount of texture. And again, just a very small amount. So we're just going to check the black clipping on this image. We see a very small amount on his jacket. We're just losing a little bit, tiny bit of shadow in there. But that's the kind of feel that we're trying to achieve with this. So yeah. for me now, I'll turn off the highlight and black clipping. I'm not going to do any more with him. I'm done with him. Let's move on to the next image. Next image, cracking shot. Um, Bridesmaids getting ready, what bride getting ready, hairdressers there, the hair in the mirror, it's all going on, it's a really busy image. Um, I always say to every couple that get married, the pictures of the day have to read like a storybook. Yeah. Uh, you read it through, you go, bam, 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 it tells a story from the beginning. The more action you get in there, the more liveliness and the, the story builds and builds and builds yeah, right totally. through. So what would I do to this? 
bright spots, distracting, what's the key, key elements I want of these two. I need to make sure that I can see the girl at the back of the bridesmaid down here. So let's just have a quick look. Let's say we bring the highlights down. I'm gonna use an adjustment brush on there and just bringing some exposure out of there. Let's make that brush nice and big. And I'll just paint that through. I'm just bringing that down a little bit around the back of them. So I'm just taking a little bit of exposure out of there. Done with that. Let's bring some shadow up. So is that yeah. something you find is, is particularly useful with the pen and the display? Is the stuff like painting oh, on the brushes? And painting with the brushes um, and using the pen to paint as a brush yeah. is really where this comes into its own. Um, if we just quickly go back into there, if I go back and we say, let's just do a new brush. Um, you know, what do I want to do? Let's say I want to take just over half a stop out. I can just come in and I can paint around that really quickly, really easily, and just take it out of very specific areas. It's yeah. so fast, it's so much quicker than trying to do it with a mouse. You've got so much control, right? So much control, I'll just bring the size of that down. And remember, we're taking just about half a stop. So I go round her, which leaves her brighter in the mirror. Awesome. Nice and clear, nice and easy. Uh, overall, do we need to make any changes? Let me come out of the brush. I'm just going to bring the exposure up a little. The same as we were just talking about, bring the blacks down, just to give it that bit of depth. And we have a quick look before and after. Nice. It's different, it's really subtle, yeah. but it makes all the difference, all the difference. Not a huge edits, not, we're not transforming. We're just trying to highlight and tell the story and parts, elements yeah. of that story that you need to bring through and really show people, that's what I want you to look at. Don't want people looking out the window, seeing yeah, what's going right. on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> There's a swimming pool out there, there may be naked people. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, another guy, male model, um, doing some portfolio stuff. I love this industrial look. Um, and in fact, it's one of my favorite spots I'll take everybody because I think the green really works. Um, the arm code barrier along it, it's just kind of, it's for, for guys, it's a proper, yeah. proper place to go. What am I gonna do with him? Nice and easy. Uh, I'm not going to touch him on exposure or colour or anything. What bugs me with this image is the background in two ways. One, it's obviously it's messy down at the front and it's got that bright bit at the side. We can crop that out. But the other is that the perspective is slightly out. Mm. Only slightly. But that really messes with my OCD. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> let's go and have a quick look on transform. And if I say auto... Auto's done a really good job. You can see that it's, it pulled the right-hand side and it straightened that out. If we say full, it does a much nicer job as well. It just totally corrects that. I'm not gonna do any more than that. That straightened that background out for me. All I need to do then is decide, let's lock the aspect ratio and bring that in to crop into the green. Awesome. Different shot entirely. Yeah. As soon as you lose all that fuss around, those vertical lines really come into play. What do I need to do with him? Actually, not a great deal. But you know, using a vignette on there, if you go into effects and you have a quick look on the vignette, the only problem for me with a vignette is that it's really even in the way that it goes in. I like the effect, but it's not quite a play. It's too even, it's too, too, too straight. Let's find a better way of doing that. And to do that, I'm gonna use a radial gradient. Nice. And the reason I do that is that I can control and dictate the shape of that so much better. So if I do that now and create this area around him, I need to invert. So the red area is the area that's been affected. Bring that exposure down. I now just bring that light straight through into the center. It's him that I wanted to look at. Again, same exactly, thing. Yeah. Just pull it back through. Shoes are a bit bright, let's come out. Let's just go into the basic, bring the highlights down and boom, small bit of clarity in there and let's just pump those greens a tiny bit back. He's done real quick, real easy. Lens correction, we're looking at very quickly just back there and uh, transform. Um, this, this image, um, it's a, a shop in North London that I did the store opening for them. Um, the problem I have with this image is twofold. One, there's barrel distortion from the lens on this. Sure. So I'm gonna, in fact, there's a couple of issues. Nice, big chromatic aberration oh, running yeah, down there too. Okay, so you can see, you pick out the cyan and the red and the separation, you see it down there too. Um, it's in a lot of images, you don't always notice it, that chromatic aberration, but under lens correction, remove the chromatic aberration, deals with that instantly. Awesome. And same, likewise, we're gonna enable the profile correction that fixes that barrel distortion. 
Now if I go into transform and I do full, it also corrects all no. of the perspective on that building and I can come in then and crop that and make that a much better crop. Let me just unlock, bring that in into the white. Let's just bring it down a touch for it so we lose the shadow and I'll keep a little bit more of the pavement at the front. Bang. Awesome. Really quick, really easy. Changes that image completely. Yeah. Um, we can go into basic then and have a quick look. Let's just brighten her up and bring the highlights down, shadows up a bit so we can see the inside, what's going on inside. A little bit of black, some vibrance, good color balance. If I hover over, you can see the values of the color. It's a little bit off. This is a gray building, so we can use that and do that as our color balance and set no. that as our white point. And that really changes that dramatically. Yeah, big time. The only thing is, distraction for me a little bit at the front there, the pavement, this is where it <laughs> looks like it's got paint splashes on the front. I'm just gonna put a small linear gradient on there, drag that up through, bring the exposure down on there and bring the highlights down. And, oh, just come off of there. If I just turn those masks off, there we go on there. You see where that is there? Yeah. Turn it off, turn it on. Just takes that edge off, just knocks it off. Now it's better, much better image. Definitely. So for you, the, the biggest kind of advantage of using the tablet in this way, or the, the display in this way, the control? Control, lack of fatigue. I have no yeah, fatigue that's at all. Um, it's really smooth, it's fluid, I'm just sat comfortably, you know, we're in great company, we sit comfortably, we <laughs> chat, we edit. Yeah. Um, it's really nice, it's a lovely experience, it's a very relaxed experience. I always find with a mouse, I'm staring at the screen, yeah. I'm moving the mouse and you end up, it's, it's all coming from here, all my edits are coming from the back of my neck where I'm craning yeah, to see what I'm doing. But this, it's nice, it's relaxed, but I'm in a really natural position, just working away on the image. This feels like you're, you're really, I mean, watching you now, it feels like you're really in the image kind much, of doing it. Much yeah. more so. And I think if you had a 24 inch monitor, I, it would be stood up and it would be pushed to the back of the desk. Yeah. Uh, I'd be some distance and you get that same old thing where you're leaning forward to look into the screen. You can bring it, you can bring that screen to you. Um, but just there's a disassociation again with, between the edit and yourself. And yeah. this is, I'm coming in to edit, I'm coming into you, and then I'm working on that edit. And it's so much. It's just more natural, and it, it, yeah. I would say it's immersive and it's engaging because you, you're in there. You actually feel like you're really, really part of that process. Yeah, which completely. is super awesome. Which is it's completely different. It's a completely different experience. If you haven't used a tablet, uh, or if you have used a tablet, using the displays and the interactive displays is next level. It really is just going next yeah. level. Um, it's actually a joy to edit on one of these devices because it is so engaging. Uh, and, you, you know, I, I love doing weddings. Uh, and I sit there grinning away, going through reliving the day because I'm in the day again. And it's just it always makes me smile yeah. doing that and going through big parties. You end up smiling, looking at your own pictures, smiling. And all right. But if I'm smiling, they're going to be well happy with these. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I just think, you know what? You need to get your hands on one, have a play. I believe you've got one in your London store. You're absolutely right. You can head on to our London store right now, depending on when you're watching this, and check them out for yourself, get your hands on them, because I think it's worth doing, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Experience yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things that really helps to understand the kind of mentality, right? But otherwise, you can check out a whole range of different Wacom mm. displays and the kind of tablets and lots of different things, big range by checking out the links in the description of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, because there's new content all the time, every single week. But all that's left for me to say, apart from thanks, Dave. Thank you. Is as always, thanks for watching.